us it is our God, always now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. O heavenly King, O comforter, the spirit of truth, who is everywhere present and fillest all things, treasury of blessings and giver of life, Come and abide in us, cleanse us from every stain, and save our souls, O good one. Holy, holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and as to ages of ages. Amen. The most holy Trinity, have mercy on us. O Lord, cleanse us from our sins. O Master, pardon our iniquities. O Holy One, visit and heal our infirmities for thy name's sake. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and as to ages of ages. Amen. O our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and of the ages of salvation. Granting to thy people victory over all their enemies, and by the power of thy cross preserving thy commonwealth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Do thou who of thine own good will was lifted up upon the cross, O Christ our God, bestow thy bounties upon the new nation which is called by thy name. <coughs> Make glad in thy might those who lawfully govern that with them we may be led to victory over our adversaries, having in thine aid a weapon of peace and a trophy invincible, both now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. O champion dread who cannot be put to confusion, despise not our petitions, O good and all praise they or talk us. Establish the way of the Orthodox, <coughs> Save those who have been called upon to govern us, leading us to that victory which is from heaven. For thou art she who gave us birth to God, and alone thy blessed. Have mercy on us, O God, according to thy great goodness. We pray thee, hearken and have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for all godly and orthodox Christians. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for our Father and Metropolitan and Joseph and all our brotherhood in Christ. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. To the holy consubstantial, life-giving and undivided Trinity, always, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill towards men. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace and goodwill towards men. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace and goodwill towards men. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. O Lord, why are they multiplied that afflict me? Many rise up against me. Many say unto my soul, There is no salvation for him and his God. But thou, O Lord, art my helper, my glory, and the lifter up of my head. I cry unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy mountain. I laid me down and slept. I awoke, for the Lord will help me. 
I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that set themselves against me round about. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for thou hast smitten all who without cause are mine enemies. The teeth of sinners hast thou broken. Salvation is of the Lord, and thy blessing is upon thy people. I lay me down and slept, I awoke, for the Lord will help me. O Lord, rebuke me not in thine anger, nor chasten me in thy wrath. For thine arrows are fastened in me, and thou hast laid thy hand heavily upon me. There is no healing in my flesh, the face of thy wrath, and there is no peace in my bones, in the face of my sins. For my iniquity is risen higher than my head, as a heavy burden that they pressed heavily upon me. My bruises have become noisome and corrupt in the face of my folly. I have been wretched and utterly bowed down unto the end. All the day long I went with downcast face, my loins are filled with mocking, and there is no healing in my flesh. I am afflicted and humbled exceedingly. I have roared from the groaning of my heart. O Lord, before thee is all my desire, and my groaning is not hid from thee. My heart is troubled, my strength hath failed me, and the light of mine eyes, even this is not with me. My friends and my neighbor drew nigh over against me, and stood, and my nearest of kin stood afar off. And they that sought after my soul used violence, and they that sought evil for me spake vain things. And craftiness all the day long did they meditate. But as for me, like a deaf man, I hear them nod, and was a speechless man that openeth not his mouth. And I became as a man that heareth not, and that hath in his mouth no reproofs. For in thee have I hoped, O Lord, thou wilt hearken unto me, O Lord my God. For I said, Let never mine enemies rejoice over me. Yea, when my feet were shaken, those men spake boastful words against me. For I am ready for scourges, and my sorrow is continually before me. For I will declare mine iniquity, I will take heed concerning my sin. But mine enemies live and are made stronger than I. And they that hated me unjustly are multiplied. They that render me evil for good slander me because I pursue goodness. <coughs> Forsake me not, O Lord of my God, depart not from me, be attentive to my help, Lord of my salvation. Forsake me not, O Lord my God, depart not from me, be attentive unto my help, O Lord of my salvation. O God, my God, unto thee I rise early at dawn, my soul hath thirsted for thee. How often hath my flesh longed after thee in a land barren and untrodden and unwatered. So in the sanctuary have I appeared before thee to see thy power and thy glory. For thy mercy is better than lives, my lips shall praise thee. So shall I bless thee in my life, and in thy name will I lift up my hands. As with marrow and fatness, let my soul be filled, and let lips rejoicing shall my mouth praise thee. If I remembered thee on my bed at dawn, I meditated on thee. For thou art become my helper, in the shelter of thy wings will I rejoice. My soul hath cleaved after thee, my right hand hath been quick to help me. But as for these, in vain have they sought after my soul, they shall go to, into the nethermost parts of the earth. They shall be surrendered unto the edge of the sword, portion for foxes shall they be. But the king shall be glad in God, everyone shall be praised that sweareth by him. For the mouth of them is stopped that speak unjust things. At the dawn I meditated on thee, for thou art become my helper, in the shelter of thy wings will I rejoice. My soul hath cleaved after thee, thy right hand hath been quick to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to thee, O God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Both now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. O Lord God of my salvation, by day I cried by night before thee. Let my prayer come before thee. Bow down thine ear unto my supplication. For filled with evils is my soul, and my life unto Hades hath drawn nigh. I am counted with them that go down into the pit. I have become as a man without help, free among the dead, like the bodies of the slain that sleep in the grave, whom thou rememberest no more, and they are cut off from thy hand. They laid me in the lowest pit in darkness in the shadow of death. Against me is thine anger made strong, and all thy billows hast thou brought upon me. Thou hast removed my friends afar from me. They have made me an abomination unto themselves. I have been delivered up and have not come forth. Mine eyes are grown weak from poverty. I have cried unto thee, O Lord, the whole day long. I have stretched out my hands unto thee. Nay, for the dead wilt thou work wonders, so shall physicians raise them up, that they may give thanks unto thee. Nay, shall any in the grave tell of thy mercy and of thy truth in that destruction. Nay, shall thy wonders be known in that darkness, and thy righteousness in that land that is forgotten. But as for me unto thee, O Lord, have I cried, in the morning shall my prayer come before thee. Wherefore, O Lord, dost thou cast off my soul, and turneth thy face away from me? A poor man am I, in troubles from my youth, yea, having been exalted, I was humbled and brought to distress. Thy fears have passed upon me, and thy terrors have sorely troubled me. They came around me about like water, all the day long they compassed me about together. Thou hast removed afar from me, friend and neighbor, and mine acquaintances because of my misery. O Lord God of my salvation, by night day I have cried, and by night before thee, 
Let my prayer come before thee, bow down thine ear unto my supplication. Bless the Lord, O my soul, all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all that he hath done for thee, who is gracious unto all thine iniquities, who healeth all thine infirmities, who redeemeth thy life from corruption, who crowneth thee with mercy and compassion, who fulfilleth thy desire with good things. Thy youth shall be renewed as the eagles. The Lord performeth deeds of mercy and executeth judgment for all them that are wrong. He hath made his ways known unto Moses, unto the sons of Israel, the things that he hath willed. Compassionate and merciful is the Lord, long-suffering and plenteous in mercy. Not unto the end will he be angered, neither unto eternity will he be wrought. Not according to our iniquities hath he dealt with us, neither according to our sins hath he rewarded us. For according to the height of heaven from the earth, the Lord has made his mercy to prevail over them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our iniquities from us. Like as a father hath compassion upon his son, so hath the Lord had compassion upon them that feared him. For he knoweth whereof we are made, he hath remembered that we are dust. As for man, his days are as the grass, as a flower of the field, so shall he blossom forth. For when the wind is passed over it, then it shall be gone, and no longer will it know its place thereof. But the mercy of the Lord is from eternity, even unto eternity, upon them that fear him. And his righteousness is upon sons of sons, upon them that keep his testament, and remember his commandments to do them. The Lord in heaven hath prepared his throne, and his kingdom ruleth over all. Bless the Lord, all you his angels, mighty in strength, that perform his word, to hear the voice of his words. Bless the Lord, all you his hosts, and his ministers that do his will. Bless the Lord, all you his works, in every place of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. In every place of his dominion, bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, hear my prayer, give ear unto my supplication in thy truth. Hearken unto me in thy righteousness. And enter not into judgment with thy servant, for in thy sight shall no man living be justified. For the enemy hath persecuted my soul, he hath humbled my life down to the earth. He has sat me in darkness as those that have long been dead, and my spirit within me has become despondent, within me my heart is troubled. I remember the days of old, and meditated on all thy works, and pondered on the creation of thy hands. I stretch forth my hands unto thee, my soul thirsteth after thee like a waterless land. Quickly hear me, O Lord, my spirit hath fainted away. Turn not thy face away from me, lest I be like them that go down into the pit. Cause me to hear thy mercy in the morning, for in thee have I put my hope. Cause me to know, O Lord, the way wherein I should walk, for unto thee have I lifted up my soul. Rescue me from mine enemies, O Lord, unto thee have I fled for refuge. Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God. Thy good spirit shall lead me in the land of uprightness. For thy name's sake, O Lord, shalt thou quicken me. In thy righteousness shalt thou bring my soul out of affliction. And in thy mercy shalt thou utterly destroy my enemies. And thou shalt cut off all them that afflict my soul, for I am thy servant. O Lord, give ear unto my supplication, and enter not into judgment with thy servant. O Lord, give ear unto my supplication, and enter not into judgment with thy servant. Thy good spirit shall lead me in the land of uprightness. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto you ages of ages. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to thee, O God. O our God and our hope, glory to thee. <coughs>
compass me about, but in the name of the Lord will I destroy them. God is the Lord who has shown us light. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. This is the Lord's doing, it is marvelous in our eyes. God is the Lord who has shown us light. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. The stone was sealed by the Jews, and the soldiers were guarding thy most pure body. Thou didst arise on the third day, O Savior, granting life to the world, for which cause the heavenly bars cried aloud unto thee, O giver of life, glory to thy resurrection of Christ, glory to thy kingdom, glory to thy providence. O thou who alone art the lover of mankind. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O holy apostles, intercede with the merciful God, that he grant unto our souls forgiveness of offenses, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. <coughs> Thou who art the mediatrix for the salvation of our race, we praise, O Virgin Theodorus, for in the flesh assumed from thee, after that he had suffered the passion of the cross, thy Son and our God delivered us from corruption. Because he is the lover of mankind. Lord of mercy. Lord of mercy. Most holy be. who kept watch over thy grave, O Savior, became as dead from the shining of the appearing angel, who told the good tidings of the resurrection to the women. Thee, therefore, do we glorify, O remover of corruption, and to thee do we bow, O thou who didst rise from the grave, O Lord, our only, O thou, our only Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Thou was nailed upon the cross willingly, O merciful one, and thou was placed in the grave like one who was dead, O giver of life trampling the pride of death, O mighty one. For because of thee, the gatekeepers of Hades did tremble, and thou didst raise the dead from thee, with thee from eternity. 
for thou alone art the lover of mankind, both now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. As Gabriel cried aloud unto thee, Hail, O Virgin, with that cry did the Lord of all become incarnate in thee, O holy ark, as spake the righteous David. And thou wast revealed as more spacious than the heavens, in that thou bore thy creator. Wherefore, glory to him who abode in thee, glory to him who came from thee, glory to him who through thy birth giving hath set us free. Verily the women did proceed to the grave early, where they beheld an angelic scene and did tremble. And when the grave shone forth with life, they were struck with astonishment. Wherefore they returned to the disciples and did preach the resurrection, saying, Verily Christ has invaded Hades, for he alone is the powerful and mighty one. And he raised with him all those who were corrupt. And with the power of his cross, he removed the fear of condemnation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. That was verily nailed upon the cross, O life of all, and was numbed of and was numbered among the dead. O deathless Lord, thou didst rise after three days, O Savior, and didst raise Adam from corruption. Wherefore, the heavenly powers shouted to thee, O giver of life, glory to thy passion, O Christ, glory to thy resurrection, glory to thy condescension, O thou alone, the lover of mankind, both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. O Mary, the reverend abode of the Lord, lift us who have fallen in the abyss of evil despair, trespasses and sorrows so thou dost give salvation to sinners thou art a helper and a strong intercessor and a save thy servants blessed art thou o lord teach me thy statutes the company of the angels was amazed when they beheld thee numbered among the dead Yet thyself, O Savior, destroy the power of death, and with thee raising up Adam, and releasing all men from hell. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me the statutes. Wherefore, O women disciples, do ye mingle sweet-smelling spices with your tears of pity? The radiant angel within the sepulchre cried unto the murdering women, Behold the grave and understand, for the Savior is risen from the tomb. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. Very early in the morning did the murdering women run the men unto thy tomb. But an angel came toward them, saying, The time for lamentation is past. Weep not, but announce unto the apostles the resurrection. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. The murdering women, more despairing spices, they drew near thy tomb, O Savior. But the angel spake unto them, saying, Why number ye the living among the dead? In that he is God, he is risen from the grave. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. We adore the Father, as also the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Holy Trinity in one essence, crying with the seraphim, Holy, Holy, Holy art Thou, O Lord, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. In that thou didst bear the giver of life, O virgin, thou didst redeem Adam from sin, and didst give to each joy in place of sadness. And he who was incarnate of thee, both God and man, hath restored to life those who had fallen therefrom. Alleluia, alleluia.
thy name and glorified is thy kingdom of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. The repentance of the thief gained him paradise by stealth and those signings, a sign of the ointment bearing women proclaim the glad tidings that thou wast risen, <coughs> O Christ, and hast bestowed upon the world thy great mercy. O Lord, to thee in my sorrows do I cry, hear thou my cry of pain. Verily, the divine desire shall be without delay upon the people of the wilderness, for that they have come out of the vain world. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto you ages of ages. Amen. Verily, glory and honor become the Holy Spirit, as they become the Father and the Son, wherefore do we praise the triune one in might. O God, since thou hast raised me to the hills of thy laws, shed brightly thy light of virtue upon me, that I may praise thee. O word, hold me fast with thy right hand. Keep me and preserve me, lest the fire of sin consume me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto you ages of ages. Amen. Verily, all creation together is generated by the Holy Spirit, and returns to its former being, for he is co-omnipotent with the Father and the Word. My soul did rejoice with those who say, Let us go into the courts of the Lord. My heart was exceedingly glad. Great fear shall be in the house of David, where the seats shall be set, and all tribes and tongues of the earth shall be judged. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto you ages of ages. Amen. Verily it is meet to offer glory, might, and power to the Holy Spirit, as to the Father and the Son, for the Trinity is one in substance, not in person. Now will I arise, saith the Lord, I will set myself for salvation, I will make no tearing therein. Now will I arise, saith the Lord, I will set myself for salvation, I will make no tearing therein. The words of the Lord are pure words. Now will I arise, saith the Lord, I will set myself for salvation, I will make no tearing in the sayings that unto thee we ascribe glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit now and ever and unto ages of ages. Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus. And very early in the morning on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb at the rising of the sun. And they were saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the door of the tomb? And looking up, they saw that the stone was rolled back. It was very large. 
And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a long white robe, and they were amazed. And he said to them, Do not be amazed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him as he told you. And they went out quickly and fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment had come upon them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Glory to thee, O Lord, glory to Have mercy on me, O God, according to thy great mercy and according to the multitude of thy compassions, blot out my transgression. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my iniquity and my sin is ever before me. Against thee only have I sinned and done this evil before thee, that thou mightest be justified in thy words and prevail when thou art judged. For behold, I was conceived in iniquities and in sins did my mother bear me. For behold, thou hast left truth, the hidden and secret things of thy wisdom, as thou made manifest unto me. Thou shalt sprinkle me with hyssop, and I shall be made clean. Thou shalt wash me, and I shall be made whiter than snow. Thou shalt make me to hear joy and gladness. The bones that be humble, they shall rejoice. Turn thy face away from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, with thy governing spirit establish me. I shall teach transgressors thy ways, and the ungodly shall turn back unto thee. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, thou God of my salvation. My tongue shall rejoice in thy righteousness. O Lord, thou shalt open my lips, and my mouth shall declare thy praise. For if thou hadst desired sacrifice, I had given it. With whole burnt offerings thou shalt not be pleased. A sacrifice unto God is a broken spirit. A heart that is broken, humble God will not despise. Do good, O Lord, in thy good pleasure unto Zion, and let the walls of Jerusalem be built up. Then shall thee be pleased with sacrifice of righteousness, with oblation and whole burnt offerings, and shall offer bullocks upon thine altar. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, through the intercessions of the apostles, O Thou who art merciful, blot out all the multitude of our transgressions, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Through the intercessions of the Theotokos, O Thou who art merciful, blot out all the multitude of our transgressions. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Jesus, having risen from the grave as he foretold, 
hath given unto us life eternal and great mercy. As God, thou didst rise in glory from the grave, raising the world with thee. All nature doth praise thee as God. Death is destroyed, and Adam doth rejoice, O Master, whilst Eve, now freed from bondage, doth rejoice, saying, Thou it is, O Christ, who granteth resurrection to all. Let us praise him who arose on the third day as the all-powerful God. He hath shattered the gates of Hades, and hath raised the, from the tomb those who were there from eternity. He did willingly appear to the myrrh bearers and say to them first, Rejoice. And to the apostles he did reveal joy as the only life giver. The women announced with joy the signs of victory to the disciples. Hades groans and death laments, but the world is glad and all rejoice. For thou it is, O Christ, who granteth resurrection to all. On June 30th in the Holy Orthodox Church, we celebrate the synaxis of the holy, glorious, and all lauded twelve apostles. The friends, of, <clears throat> the friends of Christ and the twelve God-seers do I honor, whom I dare call heroes and gods, do, and do rightly. The thirteenth gathered, the thirtieth gathered the twelve glorious initiates. Even though each one of the twelve has his own special day of celebration throughout the year, the church has set aside this day as a festal assembly of all the apostles together with them, uh, with, and with them, Paul. These are the names and the separate celebration days of the holy apostles, and how each one of these most holy and beneficial men in the world history ended their earthly life. Peter, June 29th and January 16th, was crucified upside down. Andrew, commemorated November 30th, was crucified. James, the son of Zebedee, commemorated April 30th, was beheaded. John, the theologian, commemorated September 26th, died in a miraculous, peaceful manner, the only one of the twelve to do so. Philip, commemorated November 14th, was crucified. Bartholomew, commemorated June 11th and August 25th, was crucified, scraped, and beheaded. Thomas, commemorated October 6th, was pierced with five spears. Matthew the Evangelist, commemorated November 16th, was burned alive. 
James, the son of Alphaeus, commemorated October 9th, was crucified. Thaddeus, or Jude, commemorated on June 19th, the brother of James, was crucified. Simon the Zealot, commemorated May 10th, was crucified. Matthias, commemorated August 9th, was stoned and then was beheaded after death. And Paul, commemorated June 29th, was beheaded. On this day, we also commemorate the martyr P Peter of Sinope, the new martyr Michael, the gardener of Athens. By their intercessions, O Christ, God, have mercy upon us. Amen. I shall open my mouth, and it will be filled with the Spirit. And I shall speak forth to the Queen and Mother. I shall be seen joyfully singing her praises. And I shall delight to sing of her wonders. As a living and copious fountain of the Theotokos, do thou strengthen those who him thy praises. And are joined together in spiritual company for thy service in thy divine glory. Make them worthy of crowns of glory. He who, he who sits in clouds of glory upon the throne of Godhead, Jesus the Most High God, came with mighty hand and saved those who cried out unto him, Glory to thy power, O Christ. All creation was amazed at thy divine glory, for thou, O one wedded virgin, didst hold within thee the God of all, and didst bear the eternal Son, who rewards with salvation all who him thy praises. As we the godly-minded celebrate this sacred and all-honorable feast of the Mother of God, come, let us clap our hands together and glorify the God whom she bore. The godly-minded children worship not the creature, rather than the Creator. But trampling upon the thread of fire in manly fashion, they rejoiced and sang, O oh, praised Lord, God of our fathers, blessed art thou. We praise, we bless, and we worship the Lord, the three holy children in the furnace, the child of the Theotokos save. Then was the type, now is its fulfillment, and the whole world gathers to sing. All ye works praise the Lord, and magnify him unto all ages. <laughs> rejoiced in God my Savior, more honorable than the cherubim, and more glorious beyond compare than the seraphim. Thou who without stain bearest God the word, and the truth in thy autopos to magnify thee. For he hath regarded the loneliness of his handmaiden, for behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. More honorable than the cherubim, and more glorious beyond compare than the seraphim. Thou who with our stain bearest God the word, and are truly fail to us, we magnify thee. For he that is mighty has magnified me. And holy is his name, and his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. More honorable than the cherubim, and more glorious beyond compare than the seraphim. Thou who without stain bearest God the word, and the truly Theotokos, we magnify thee. He had shown strength with his arm. Yet scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. More honorable than the cherubim, and more glorious beyond compare than the seraphim. Thou who without stain bearest God the word, and 
and send forth unto thy servants quick help from God, the Holy. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord from the heavens. Praise Him in the highs to the Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent great greatness. O thou who didst despoil hell and raise men again from the dead by thy resurrection, O Christ, make us worthy with pure hearts to praise and glorify thee. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp, glorifying thy divine condescension. We praise thee, O Christ, for thou wast born of a virgin, yet was not separated from the Father. Thou didst suffer as a man, and of thine own free will endure the cross, and thou didst rise again from the tomb, going forth as from a bridal chamber, that thou mightest save the world, O Lord, glory to thee. Praise him from the timbrel and dance, praise him with stringed instruments and organs. O chief foundation of Christ, divine apostles, having left all things behind to follow after him, unto thy teachers didst thou cry out, I shall die with thee so that I also may live and blessed life. Now, O Peter, as the teacher of the world entire, thy steadfast preacher, the rock of faith, the boast and glory, and the unshakable tower of the church, against which Hades' gates cannot prevail, even as Christ our God hath foretold to thee, do thou fervently pray to him to enlighten and to save our souls. Praise him upon the loud cymbals, praise him upon the high sounding cymbals, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Thou who, who while yet in thy mother's womb was chosen, having fled the burden of all things material, and given wings by thy great desire, 
that truly flewest to the divine height of fervent love for, for God. Where is the supremely bright darkness of divine of light divine? And having entered therein, O Paul, as thou without flesh, thou was instructed in words unspeakable, and thou was sent forth to those in the dark, and didst show them them the light. Jesus Christ, our, our God, do thou therefore entreat him to enlighten and save our souls. The sound hath gone forth into all the earth, and the words to the ends of the world. Thou who art light that existed in all ages, when thou didst vouchsafe to come to me, the lowly man through thine ineffable love for man, and to become flesh in thy great goodness, O Savior of the world, thine apostles and disciples, didst thou then reveal as second lines, brightly glittering with the resplendence, and the dread lightning that flasheth forth from thee. And being sent forth, they illumined all of creation with thy divine light, O Lord. And they ever beseech thee to enlighten and to save our souls. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament proclaimeth the works of his hands. O sacred Peter and Paul, the words chief plowmen, Andrew, James, and John, most wise. August, Bartholomew, Philip, and Thomas, called Didymus. O Jude, and Simon, and thou divine James, with Matthew, great of fame. O ye universal twelve disciples, all revered, who preach the holy trinity throughout the whole world that he by nature is everlasting God, ye truly unhewn towers of the church and unshakable pillars of towering height, intercede with the master of all things that we might all be saved. Glory to the Father, of ages. Amen. Most blessed art thou, O Virgin Theotokos, for through him that was incarnate of thee is Hades despoiled. Adam is recalled from the dead. The curse is made void. Eve is set free. Death is slain, and we are endowed with life. Wherefore, in hymns of praise, we cry aloud, Blessed art thou, O Christ our God, who is thus well pleased. Glory to thee. Glory to you who have shown us a light. Glory to God.
to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. It is the kingdom of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. To the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. It is.
is good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing psalms to thy name, O Most High. Through the intercessions of the Theotokos, O Savior, save us. To proclaim thy mercy at dawn and thy truth by night. Through the intercessions of the Theotokos, O Savior, save us. So that they may declare that the Lord my God is fair and there is no injustice in him. Through the intercessions of the Theotokos, O Savior, save us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Through the intercessions of the Theotokos, O Savior, save us. the majesty and thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. The Lord is king, he is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed with strength and he hath girt himself. O Son of God, who arose from the dead, save us who sing to thee, Alleluia. For he established the world which shall not be shaken. O Son of God, who arose from the dead, save us who sing to thee, Alleluia. Holiness becometh thy house, O Lord, in the length of days. O Son of God, who arose from the dead, save us who sing to thee, Alleluia. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Only begotten Son and immortal Word of God, who for our salvation is will to be incarnate. Mankind, and unto thee we ascribe glory, 
to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages.
brethren, God has exhibited us apostles as last of all, like men sentenced to death because we have become a spectacle to the world, to angels and to men. We are fools for Christ's sake, but you are wise in Christ. We are weak, but you are strong. You are held in honor, but we in disrepute. To the present hour we hunger and thirst. We are all ill-clad and buffeted and homeless, and we labor working with our own hands. When reviled, we bless. When persecuted, we endure. When slandered, we try to conciliate. We have become and are now as the refuse of the world, the off-scouring of all things. I do not write this to make you ashamed, but to admonish you as my beloved children. For though you have had countless guides in Christ, you have not had many fathers. For I became your father in Christ Jesus through the gospel. I urge you then be imitators of me. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. Pray therefore the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. And he called to him his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every disease and every infirmity. The names of the twelve apostles are these. First, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Labaius, who is called Thaddeus, Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. These 12 Jesus sent out, charging them, go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel and preach as you go, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, cast out demons. You received without paying, give without pay. Breaking in a new deacon. In case you didn't know, Deacon David and Deacon Chris Dillon are being uh, elevated to the Holy Priesthood in a couple of weeks here at St. Barnabas. First weekend of August. What is that, third and fourth or fourth and fifth? I'm not sure, but that first weekend. We'll be joined by Metropolitan Joseph, who will be putting that mark, <laughs> the mark of the Holy Priesthood, 
on these two young men. <sighs> sure, they're pretty, but like my grandma said, can she cook? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. On this second Sunday after Pentecost, we celebrate the synaxis of the Twelve Apostles. The word synaxis in Greek refers to a gathering, specifically a liturgical gathering. And so today we gather to remember the Twelve Apostles, first called by our Lord. It's the same root, by the way, as for the word synagogue, which is also a gathering, a place of gathering for the Jews and the early Christians alike. Of course, as we know, Christianity soon separated from the synagogue and began to develop its own liturgical practice. And during this time over centuries, various synaxes emerged. Originally, these uh, services, such as we do today, uh, were local events that were held after a, a major universal feast in, in, in which, let's say, the local patron saint of that feast might be featured. Uh, for example, uh, Theophany, Holy Theophany features uh, our Lord and the revelation of the Holy Trinity as our Lord is being baptized by John in the Jordan. So a local parish, perhaps consecrated to St. John, would have a synaxis, would have a gathering, maybe the next day, where people would have special prayers of, of petition and intercession to St. John. Well, over time, this idea of being a good one spread, and quite a few special commemorations developed in parishes everywhere throughout the Christian world. And it's sort of a grassroots liturgical contribution, you might say, that uh, each of these churches and sometimes regions and sometimes nations would, would develop. Eventually, many of these came into general use throughout the entire church, such as the one that we celebrate today. And at the same time, there are also many synaxes which uh, remain local in nature, which aren't celebrated throughout the world, but are always celebrated in their respective regions or countries, like also today is the, the uh, synaxis of the saints of North America. We have their icon. Actually, that's an older icon because I think the new ones include the latest saint of North America, Raphael of Brooklyn. Uh, but up until that, it was all Russians, and so it was the OCA that mostly celebrated that. But we snuck one of our guys in. So. In review, a synaxis can be dedicated to a single saint or to a group of saints. It can be local, it can be universal, it can be ancient or relatively contemporary. But in every case, it is a natural expression of the love and devotion that the faithful hold for their saint or saints and for the God who raised them up. So today we remember the 12 apostles who also were gathered on the day of Pentecost to receive the Holy Spirit and began the preaching of the Holy Gospel to the whole world. Of course, the word apostle means one who is sent. And so we have in this picture both a gathering and a sending. They gathered together to receive the Holy Spirit and they were sent out into all the world to preach. And in a very real and true sense, this is what we portray each and every Sunday, because we gather together to worship our God, to receive from him divine power from on high, and then we go forth into the world to proclaim the gospel through our manner of life. In this small way, we are all little apostles, because we too are sent out to bring Christ into the world around us. And I wonder if often enough we realize that when we come here every Sunday. Do you realize, for example, that you are not just going to church, but in fact, you are gathering together with all of the others to become the church. This is an action. It's not just showing up to the dentist's office or going grocery shopping. You are coming here to become something greater than yourself. 
we also receive power from on high, as did the twelve when they were gathered together. We receive the body and blood of Christ unto sanctification, or unto, unto holiness, in other words. And by sharing in his holiness, we become holy. Lastly, we are sent forth each week, having gathered together as a church to worship, having received power from on high and, and sanctification from God, we are sent out on mission to bring the kingdom of God into the world for the life of the world and for its salvation. Now, if we fail to realize this process, then it gets broken down into various disassociated components. Church attendance becomes just another appointment on an already busy schedule. We might come late or miss entire services because it's more convenient and we see ourselves only as individual participants. We don't see how important it is that we come together at a specific time to become the church. It's just someplace we go, right? We're a little bit detached in that. Can you imagine the member of an orchestra who somehow doesn't grasp the simple fact that he's supposed to show up on time and play with all the others? You know, how great would that, where's the tuba? I don't know, he'll be here in about half an hour, you know. In many people's minds, the church is kind of like that. They show up when they want and they play for themselves. But as a lady on the commercial said, that's not how any of this works. <laughs> when it comes to the Holy Sacrament, also another component, if we don't see that the sanctification imparted to us is itself part of a larger process and not an end unto itself, then we risk partaking in a most unworthy manner. Again, we may see it in an individualistic way, and I think this is always a temptation for us, that the Eucharist is some sort of private action between me and God and doesn't have anything to do with anybody else, but that's wrong for a start. How else can it be the body of Christ and not involve everyone? Which is why we're responsible to everyone to partake in a proper manner. But it's not just for my benefit alone. It's not just between me and God. Perhaps I've been absent from church for a long while. Perhaps I have neglected repentance and been careless in conduct. Perhaps I have avoided confession as a, more or less a sign of my lack of an interior life with God. The individual probably doesn't think that any of this matters as long as he's here now and demanding to partake. But the person who sees himself as part of the body of Christ will begin very much to care about these things. And he will seek to live in a way that keeps him in communion with the faithful throughout the week. You see, when we talk about preparing for Holy Communion, we don't just mean, uh, you know, Saturday night, reading a bunch of prayers. It's talking about how you live all week. That's how you prepare for communion on Sunday, as you live rightly and righteously and holy lives throughout the week and be of course read your prayers too that's okay but that's it's not just like we read prayers and hocus pocus there we're now we're prepared and i think also if we don't recognize this process that i'm trying to describe then we likely won't complete it either you know if we don't know there's even a process i come i gather i receive grace from on high and i go out Sound a little like Shatner there. We won't complete it by taking our sanctification out into the world. You see, that's really important. Really important. That's part of why we do this. Again, Christianity isn't just for our benefit, to make us you know, holy unto ourselves, but to take it out into the world, to be apostles, to share the gospel. Christianity wasn't just for Jerusalem. And in case the apostles didn't get the point, Jerusalem was destroyed and everybody was scattered. And so they had to take the gospel out. But we are today the people. You realize that we are the people who will save the world. There's no one else, you know, us Christians. We're the ones who have this message. It is our generation, it is our time to take it forth and to share it for the life of the world. But 
if we don't have a clue or if we don't have a care, then these things don't matter. After church, show's over. Go home. Well, go to coffee hour first and then go home. How are we to bring Christ into the world if we don't see ourselves rightly before church, during church, and after church? Before, in terms of our preparation and our gathering, when we're here to share one another, with one another in this mutual sanctification and afterwards to take that grace out into the world and be little Christ, little apostles. If we don't see this, you know, we get very sloppy in our behavior. Like I said, we come late or we're indifferent or we don't, you know, all kinds of things can go wrong. It reminds me of that astronaut who once said, when a rocket launches, there's a thousand things that can happen. Only one of them is good. You know? Boy, I wouldn't want to be that guy. But there's a lot that can go wrong with what we do unless we're focused on being the body of Christ, coming together to become the church, receiving that grace and taking it out. Because otherwise, what are we doing? Are we gathering and then being sent forth? Or are we just coming and going? You know, just coming and going like it's anything else. On this day, as we gather to commemorate the 12 and adjust our perspective if needed, I ask us to consider our role as little apostles, you know, and, and fulfill the will of God for us because we are called to save the world. Not merely, you know, as to live not merely as we might want to, but to live as we ought to, as we are divinely and graciously called to. And many times that's where we, we break down. It's not thy will be done, but it's like, what? God has a will too? You know, a lot of times we just don't even consider that. Uh, we need to, because it's everything. Christ is everything. May God help us to the glory of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. No one despises the desires of the flesh, and the flesh is worthy of approach to approach or draw higher to serve you as a glory. For to serve thee is a great and terrible thing, even in the hands of the gods. Nevertheless, the truth of thine unspeakable and found. Church, you can find
Joseph taking down the most important cure by the cross, wrapped in his fine linen and spices and laid it in his tomb. of thine only begotten Son, with whom thou art blessed, together with thine all holy, good, and life-giving Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages.
one Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the only begotten, begotten of the Father before all worlds, by the light, very God, very God, begotten, not made, of one essence with the Father, by whom all things are made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate, and suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge the living and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. to him thee to bless thee to praise thee to give thanks unto thee and to worship thee in every place of thy dominion for thou art god ineffable inconceivable invisible incomprehensible ever existing and eternally the same thou and thine only begotten son and thy holy spirit thou it was who didst bring us from non-existence into being and when we had fallen away didst raise us up again and didst not cease to do all things until thou hast brought us back to heaven and hast endowed us with thy kingdom which is to come. For all these things we give thanks unto thee and to thine only begotten Son and thy Holy Spirit. For all these things of which we know and of which we know not, and for all the benefits bestowed upon us, both manifest and unseen. And we give thanks unto thee also for this ministry which thou dost vouchsafe to receive at our hands, even though there stand beside thee thousands of archangels and ten thousands of angels, the cherubim and the seraphim, six-winged, many-eyed, soaring aloft, borne on their pinions, singing the triumphal hymn, shouting, proclaiming, and saying, <laughs> which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sin.
cross that raised the resurrection on the third day, the ascension into heaven, the session at the right hand, and the second and glorious heaven. Thine own of thine own we offer unto thee in behalf of all and for all. precious body of thy Christ. Amen. And that which is in this cup, the precious blood of thy Christ. Amen. Changing them by thy Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. That to those who shall partake thereof they may be unto cleansing of soul, unto the remission of sins, unto the communion of thy Holy Spirit, unto the fulfillment of the kingdom of heaven, unto boldness toward thee, and not unto judgment or unto condemnation. And again, we offer unto thee this reasonable service for all those who in faith have gone before us to their rest, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, ascetics, and every righteous spirit made perfect in faith. Especially our all holy immaculate, most blessed and glorious Lady Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary. It is truly me to bless you. Oh. Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages.
Vouchsafe, O Lord, that with boldness and without condemnation we may dare to call upon thee, the heavenly God as Father, and to say, the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Son, with whom thou art blessed, together with thy all holy, good, and life giving spirit, now in death and unto ages of ages. Amen. Look down, O Lord Jesus Christ, our God, from thy holy dwelling place and from the throne of the glory of thy kingdom, and come to sanctify us, O thou who sitteth on high with the Father and art here and visibly present with us, and vouchsafe by thy mighty hand to impart unto us thine immaculate body and precious blood, and through us unto all the people. O God, be gracious unto me, a sinner, and have mercy upon me. O God, be gracious unto me, a sinner, and have mercy upon me. O God, be gracious unto me, a sinner, and have mercy upon me. Let us have Holy things are for the holy.
feast at his tabernacle, and he, like a bridegroom coming forth from his chamber, will rejoice like a giant to run his course.
give thanks unto thee, O Lord, who lovest mankind, benefactor of our souls and bodies, for that thou hast vouchsafed this day to feed us with thy heavenly and immortal mysteries. Make straight our path, establish us all in thy fear. Guard our life, make firm our steps through the prayers and intercessions of the glorious Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary and of all thy saints. With thou art our sanctification, and unto thee we ascribe glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. To thee, O Christ, our God, and our hope, glory to thee. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Father, May he who rose from the dead, Christ our true God, through the intercessions of his all immaculate and all blameless Holy Mother, by the might of the precious and life-giving cross, by the protection of the honorable bodiless powers of heaven, at the supplication of the honorable glorious prophet, forerunner and Baptist John, of the holy glorious and all laudable apostles, especially the 12 whose synaxis we now celebrate, of our Father among the saints, John Chrysostom, Archbishop of Constantinople, whose divine liturgy we have now celebrated, of the holy, glorious, and right victorious martyrs, of our venerable and God-bearing fathers, of Saint Barnabas, the patron and protector of this holy community, of the uh, uh, ancestors of God, Joachim and Anna, the martyr Peter of Sinope, the new martyr Michael, the gardener of Athens, whose memory we celebrate today, and of all the saints, have mercy upon us and save us, for as much as he is good and love us mankind. Through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save us. Amen. Well, it's at this time we'll have our monthly memorial. In this case, all those family members and loved ones who have passed away during months of June that we commemorate at this time.
praise our God, always, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages. God, holy, mighty, holy, immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy, mighty, holy, immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy, mighty, holy, immortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. O Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. Lord, cleanse us from our sins. Master, pardon our iniquities. Holy One, visit and heal our infirmities for thy name's sake. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. With the Spirit. Ever righteous made perfect, give rest to the souls of thy servants, O Savior, and preserve it in that life of blessedness which is with thee, O thou who lovest mankind. In the place of thy rest, O Lord, where all thy saints repose, give rest also to the souls of thy servants, for thou. Mankind, glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Thou art our God, who descended into hell, and loosed the bonds of those who were there. Thyself give rest also to the souls of thy servants, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. A virgin alone, pure and immaculate, who without stain did bring forth God, intercede for the salvation of their souls. Have mercy on us, O God, according to thy great mercy. We pray thee, hearken and have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for the repose of the souls of the servants of God, Jacob, Megan, Marion, Juan, Paul, Mildred, Douglas, Arnold, Millie, Bill, Danny, Phoebe, Monk, John, Bill, Gabriel, Robert, Roland, Metropolitan, Antonio, Shidwari, Melba, John, Josh, Don, Daniel, Josh, Reader, Herman, Anne, Don, Danny, Bobby, Father Timothy, Charles, Stella, Angelo, Anastasi, Anne, Andrea, Whitney, and Agnes Marie departed this life, and that thou wilt pardon their every transgression, both voluntary and involuntary. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. That the Lord God will establish them, their souls where the just repose. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Mercies of God, the kingdom of heaven, and forgiveness of their sins. Let us ask Christ, our mortal King and our God. Grant this, o Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. O God of spirits and of all flesh, who has trampled down death and made powerless the devil and given life to thy world. Do thou, the same Lord, give rest to the souls of thy departed servants, Jacob, Macon, Marion, Juan, Paul, Mildred, Douglas, Arnold, Millie, Bill, Daniel, Phoebe, the Monk John, Bill, Gabriel, Robert, Roland, his eminence metropolitan Antonios, for Melba, John, Josh, jo Don, Daniel, Josh, the reader Herman, Anne, Don, Danny, Bobby, the priest Timothy, for Charles, Stella, Angelo, Anastasi, 
for Anne, Andrea, Whitney, and Agnes Marie, in a place of brightness, a place of verdure, a place of repose, whence all sickness, sorrow, and sighing have fled away. Pardon every sin which they have committed, whether by word or deed or thought, for thou art good and lovest mankind. For there is no man who liveth and sinneth not, and thou only art without sin, and thy righteousness is to all eternity, and thy law is truth. For thou art the resurrection and the life and the repose of thy departed servants, O Christ our God, and unto thee we ascribe glory, together with thy fathers from everlasting, and that all holy good and life-giving spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. With some of blessed Theotokos, who art most holy, save us. More honorable than the cherubim, and beyond compare more glorious than the seraphim. Thou who without stain bearest God the word, and are truly Theotokos, we magnify thee. Glory to thee, O Christ, our God, and our hope, glory to thee. our true God, who hath dominion over the living and the dead, through the intercessions of his all-immaculate and all-blameless Holy Mother, of our venerable and God-bearing fathers, and of all the saints, establish the souls of his servants departed this life in his holy mansions, and number them among the just, and have mercy on us, for as much as he is good and loveth mankind. May thy memory be eternal, O our ever-memorable brethren, who art worthy of blessedness. of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save us. 